They never told me I needed to find topics for this episode. I'm a genius. Hello? It's me. Oh. A certain number of years ago, I don't really know how many, but probably a couple, two friends met in school. One has gone on to become the host of Culture Shock, but she's hiding a dark secret. It needs help from the other, the other being Rachel, who's from Hong Kong. You remember me, right? Um, you came to Singapore in high school for an exchange program and I generously showed you around. Right. Are you down to return the favor and give a crash course on Hong Kong for my show? Sure. They wanted to go to Hong Kong, but the paperwork to get there was just too excruciating. Now they're stuck in Boston, but want to recreate the Hong Kong experience. Will they be able to do it or will their affair be infernal? Does that even make sense here? I don't know what Infernal means. It was supposed to be a callback to a popular movie, Infernal Affairs, that this bit is based Dude, on. Dude, are you done yet? Sorry. Let's start recording. I have a lot to do today. Are you going to introduce me? Yeah, just a second. <clears throat> Are you chewing gum? Gum? What? No, 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 no. We're not in Singapore anymore. You won't get fined for chewing gum here. Okay. Then, yeah, I am chewing gum, and I'm not afraid to say it. Actually, for the audio, it would be best if you didn't chew gum while recording. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hello everyone, live, laugh, love in Hong Kong. That was your segue? So, Hong Kong, we could talk about the classic cinema like Infernal Affairs, Chungking Express, In the Mood for Love. I love those, but I've never gotten the ending of In the Mood for Love. And what's it about whispering into a hole and then covering it with mud? It's so weird. It's a great way to feel liberated without actually having to tell your secrets to anyone. You should try it sometime. I would never do that. Anyway, the best thing about Hong Kong is definitely the food. Right, but do you think it's better than the Hawker Center food in Singapore? What? You know, the big, amazing, huge food courts where you had the laksa, the spicy thing with when you had to drink the milk and you dropped all the milk on your shirt. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you remember when you dropped the milk on your Let's shirt? Let's just go to Chinatown to try out some food or else we are gonna fall way off schedule. This time I'll bring my camera in case it happens again. Do you have a script for this or anything? Of course not. It's a vlog. I know most of the people in Singapore speak Mandarin, but in Hong Kong and Boston's Chinatown, we actually speak Cantonese. Oh, so do you think you can teach some of my loyal viewers some Cantonese phrases? Can. Do you think you can manage? Can. All right, what do you want to learn? How do you say, I'm so hungry? No, ho, to, no. So now we're seated at Great Taste in Chinatown, and man, no, ho, to, oh. Let's try some 
great food. This is dan tan. Could I get a dan tan? Sai do si. Sai do si. Siu mai. Siu mai. Bao lo bao. Bao lo bao. Wait, say that again. Thank me, go fight. Chop you a lung? Yeah, Cantonese isn't Google translatable, so good luck figuring that one out. Well, I thought I was learning to learn the basics of Cantonese. Yeah, that's cute. You still have a long way to go, but you're doing pretty good for someone who's learning a language with nine tones. Whoa, it's 6.30 and everything's closed. Do you know what they say? Boston is the city that sleeps. Who says that? All right, let's try this again. Actually, Hong Kong and Singapore have a lot in common. There's the humidity that's so bad that you want to peel your skin off. Hmm. Thank God all our malls have aircon. Yeah, Hong Kong has malls everywhere. Um, the, the MRT is fast and, and my friends, if, if they want to meet, I can leave a few minutes before and be only two minutes late. Why don't you just leave on time? Well, what about the trains in Boston? The orange line sucks. Colonization also sucks. That's one thing we have in common. True and sad. In fact, Singapore was a British colony for 144 years, and Hong Kong was also a British colony from 1841 to 1997. While our histories are inexorably linked with those of our colonizers, at the very least, we are now building a culture in which Western influences are only part of the many diverse backgrounds that contribute to making Hong Kong and Singapore the culturally rich hubs that we know them to be. Whoa. So smart. I wish I could string together random combos of words as well as you do. You'll get there. Maybe. I feel like I'm just not the best host. Oh, look, I'm getting a call. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Hey, you're the host of that college show, right? That's me. Why are you so sad? I was doomed to a life of mediocrity. Don't worry, tomorrow will be a sunny day. <laughs> Thanks for the update, weather boy. There's always hope for tomorrow. The future's in my own hands. Were you saying something before I left? Uh, well, I, I was doing bad, but then the craziest thing happened. I was walking and suddenly a post-production rainstorm started and these soccer dweebs started kicking soccer balls at me. And then the small weatherman told me it's gonna be a sunny day. And you know what? He was right. My entire outlook on life shifted and I feel like I'm a better person now. Wait, that sounds oddly like an old PSA from Hong Kong. Huh. Well, anyways, I started to feel guilty about the whole Laksa incident and I've been keeping the secret for you from a really long time and I've been wanting to tell you that I... We've covered everything I wanted to. Well, Rachel, I added some extra hot sauce to the Laksa and I, that's why I asked you to drink a gallon of milk from the carton and you, so that you look like a little freak. I know you sh I shouldn't have done that, but... Oh, I can't. Rachel, you weren't even listening.